Hey guys, it's Jess. Welcome back to the Burbstead and welcome to my dining room. This is one of the rooms that is actually done inside the house, which is really exciting. This is actually the first room that got completed last fall and it is probably currently my favorite room. I absolutely love being in here. It's just so crisp and clean and calming and it just feels like me. So that's why we're gonna sit in here today. And I have a whole bunch of seeds. I'm trying to narrow down what I am planting. I'm trying, I'm trying you guys. It's, uh, it's so hard. It's so hard. And on top of that, I had some more that came in. So I'm gonna try and work through what I've got. But in the meantime, I thought it might be fun to show you my seed organization and some of the things that I got so far. And give it a go. See what you guys like. I. It seems like this time of year is kind of the best time for seed opening videos, or like opening videos in general. I didn't know that opening videos were a whole genre until I went to look at buying somebody a gift and I was actually looking to buy somebody a pair of shoes and I wasn't sure what kind to get. I was wanting to just find reviews on the fit and the function and whether you know people generally liked one pair over another. And as I was kind of going through, I realized opening videos is a giant thing on YouTube. Nearly. And then <laughs> I've seen a number of gardening channels do see opening and mail time videos also. So that adds to it. <laughs> but anyway, so this is what I got. I got a whole bunch of things. And I think that these are some of the things that I am most excited about so far because I sat and I thought about these were not impulse purchase seeds by the way this particular bunch these were things that I really sat down and thought about what do I actually want to grow and actually want to eat because sometimes I get really excited and I see something I'm like oh I want to have seeds for that because I want to grow that sometime in the future and then I'll just save them so I'm gonna kind of sort these out right now and see what I have before I go through them and then We'll talk about how I organize them in my little totes. All right, guys. So this is what I've got. I've got them kind of separated into different categories and I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly and then I'll kind of walk you through what my seed organizing is so then that way you can kind of see how I do that. And hopefully thin out some of these <laughs> that I'm planning on starting. So the first thing that I've got is I have some different lettuces and um, types of uh, leafy greens essentially. So I have some arugula, I got some Vulcan Swiss chard. I thought that the stalks on these would be really, really pretty to put in either uh, cut flower arrangements or just to have in a bed somewhere as kind of an accent. I don't, I don't eat particularly Swiss chard or mustard greens or kale or something like that. It's not something that I just generally have in my diet or particularly care for, but I thought that they were really, really pretty. And also it would be something that if I got down to the end of the year and had a lot of harvest, I could donate to the food bank because they are always asking for fresh vegetables. I got um, little baby tiny bok choy. I do like baby bok choy. I thought these were so cute. They're so little. And I have some of those grow towers that have, you know, three little cells per level. And I thought that these would be really great to grow in some of those because they're so small. And I could kind of put lettuces around other ones, but this would give me some variety with stir fries and stuff like that. And then I got some five color silk uh, Swiss chard, which is the same thing, uh, same reason, just because I thought it was pretty. And then I got some, excuse me. And then I got some uh, strawberry spinach or spinach strawberry 
because I thought it was really pretty to have these kind of little fruits that are off of them. I thought that was really interesting to possibly try, see what that would taste like. I thought it might be really, really good in kind of a fresh salad or something, some sort of maybe taco or something like that. I put everything in tacos, so I thought it would be really good for that. And then next I have peas. I realized this year that out of the orders that I had gone through, I hadn't really got peas. I had beans, but for some reason I had missed buying any peas and I really, really liked them and I couldn't find any when I went through all of my seeds to figure out what I wanted to plant this year. So I ended up getting some, I got some sugar magnolia tendrils because I thought that they were super pretty. They've got really, really pretty flowers and the pea pods are purple, which I thought that was really cool. And then I got some sugar in, which are really sweet, and some little marbles, just for some differences to kind of compare the two varieties, see what I like better. This is kind of an experiment on what I actually like year over year. And you don't get a whole lot of yield off of one plant, so you kind of have to plant quite a bit to, to get any sort of yield with peas. And then these up front here, these are sunflowers, <laughs> of course. Um, this is a gold coin, which doesn't have a picture on it. Um, which is just a, a standard variety, kind of big yellow. I've got a gold ring sunflower. This is a dwarf sunflower, and it says that it only gets 20 inches tall, which I was really excited about. Um, I thought that they were really cute and sweet and tiny, and I thought they'd be really, really fun in flower arrangements. Kind of do like a mixed, mixed size. You could put them, I could put them in containers out on the front porch. And then I got some short stuff because I thought they also looked really interesting having a dwarf size, two or three foot tall sunflower with a really full head on it. I thought that would be really interesting along a fence line that could have more support where I get a little bit more wind and they wouldn't be as protected, but I could still have them there. So those are going in my bunch. I'm planting a ton of sunflowers this year, so I'm gonna see how all of them do. I got two types of tomatillos. I got a queen of Malinaco. I thought that was really interesting looking. It's kind of oblong shaped. I thought that was really kind of unique. I've never seen them like that. And then I got an Amaria tomatillo. I thought those would be fun because I love salsas and stuff like that. And then I got some tomatoes. I am doing a ton of dwarf tomatoes this year because I just really loved them last year. I thought they were a lot of fun, but these are some that I kept seeing reviews on that people really, really loved. And so I thought that I would give them a try, kind of see once I get down to actually starting what I would decide to pick. I think this one, this first one is Sunrise but Rise Bumblebee is one I'm definitely gonna try. Uh, everybody has raved about it that I've seen. And then I got a pineapple tomato because I thought it was really pretty. I got a Dr. Weiches or I think that um, some other people call it Dr. Witchies, depending on what <laughs> what pronunciation you have. I think Dr. Witchies sounds cuter, but this one is supposed to be really, really great. I got a Rebecca Allen because one of my best friends is named Rebecca. I kept thinking of her every time I saw it, I went past it. I was like, I think I'm gonna grow those just cause. I got a mortgage lifter. Um, I got a gold medal. I got a millionaire. I got a German lunchbox. These are kind of snack sized and I thought they'd be really fun for my sister-in-law. She absolutely loves tomatoes. Those are her favorite thing to eat and she just literally goes outside and picks them off the vine. So I thought this would be kind of fun for her to to have possibly if she if she wanted to start. She hasn't told me what she's looking for yet, um, but I thought that might be kind of fun. And I got a German pink, a principal bolognese, and an Isis candy cherry. And next I bought, um, I'm gonna save this one for the last, but I got some greens. I was really excited about this idea of growing my own grain. I have a couple of grains, but they are more for, just because they're pretty, <laughs> is more what they're for. But I thought that it would be really nice to do some grains to be able to probably cook with them, possibly even turn them into some sort of flour. 
and also a couple, one of them specifically I bought as a potential cover crop later in the year. So first one I have is a, the first two I have are quinoas and I got a Brightest Brilliant, which is kind of a multicolor one, different colors in it, I thought it was really pretty. And then I got a Cherry Vanilla, also really, really pretty. And I don't know, I mean, couldn't you just imagine, these grow three to five feet tall and I just thought, you know, mixing them in between some really tall sunflowers kind of would just be really interesting. It's kind of a big, long screen with some other things like that that grow really, really tall. Next, I got two types of buckwheat. I got a red rose soba, which is so pretty. Look, this one I got really because it's pretty, but also I thought it would be a really nice cover crop later. But look at it. It's just pink and airy and... I thought it'd be really, really great. I've got some really tough clay soil in my yard, and it's not as bad as some areas, I know. I've, I've seen some people's clay soil, and mine is not that bad, but I thought over time, being able to grow something that is one, beautiful, and two, really, really helpful to kind of start to amend some of that natural soil would be really, really great. And the other one I got is the white, white buckwheat, which I really did buy intentionally as a cover crop. So I've got peppers. Peppers are one of my favorite things to grow. I got a lemon drop because I thought it'd be really fun. I got a Thai red chili because I do eat these on a pretty regular basis. I find myself buying them at the store a lot because I make a lot of chili. And that's another reason why I bought some different peppers is because I love to make chili. Absolutely love it. And that's another reason why there's a difference for all the tomatoes and tomatillos and things like that too because I do want to experiment with some of that uh, but these I I find myself buying a lot I got puma peppers I've never seen these before but I thought that they were just really really pretty all those kind of fall colors those fall tones I thought that they were just really interesting they're supposed to be as hot as a habanero but really just very attractive, very attractive fruit. And then I got a Sugar Rush Cream and a Sugar Rush Peach. So that way I could kind of compare the two, but they're both a sweet, spicy pepper. And I thought they would be really great on tacos or in some sort of jam or a chutney or something like that. And then I got uh, California Wonder Peppers. I'm starting peppers for uh, a few people actually this year so they were just asking for kind of standard bell peppers and so this is a really great one to start for other people and then I got some herbs I got cilantro for some reason I didn't have any cilantro I thought that was really odd um, I'm not quite sure why I didn't have any but I couldn't find any so I, I bought some I bought some lemon basil because I thought for lemonades it'd be really tasty. I, I have some other ingredients to kind of mix with that. I found a recipe that asked for it and I thought, hmm, that would be fun. I'll just mix it in. And then I got some cardinal basil. I thought this was absolutely beautiful when it went to flower. And I'd never seen this before when it has kind of purple flowers, unless it was kind of a, you know, a dark purple basil. But for flower arrangements, I thought it would be beautiful to intentionally let it go to seed and then use the, the seed heads in arrangements. I thought that was really pretty. So I'll probably grow that with the cut flowers because um, I do want to have a cut flower section within my garden this year. I got some melons. I didn't have any melons. This was another thing I got as new. My sister-in-law said that she wanted to grow them. She really likes them. She likes honeydew, which is her favorite. So I got a honeydew a tam deuce, uh, kind of a, just a basic honeydew. And then I got a bull door honeydew also. So hopefully maybe start a couple for her so she can kind of pick, see what she wants. And then I got a, a tigger melon. And I'll see if I can pop a picture of this one up on the screen since I don't have, have it on this packet. But this one looked really, really interesting. It's very orangey and stripey and I thought that it would be kind of fun to grow something different. And they're supposed to be not very big, so I thought they might grow well on a trellis. And then I got a Charente's melon. This one I had been looking at for a long time. 
but I just never really pulled the trigger on it. It's very, they're kind of small fruits, but they have very thin skins and they're supposed to be very sweet. So I thought that they were just really, really pretty and interesting. And sometimes that's what you want. You just want something that's pretty and interesting. I got uh, a strawberry watermelon. This is probably this one and a, a sugar baby rush is probably what I'm going to grow as far as watermelons go this year. Watermelon's my favorite. So this one is supposed to taste amazing and be somewhat disease resistant and pest resistant from the reviews and grow really, really well. So this is probably going to be on my list for this one spot I have carved out for melon. And then I got a chrysanthemum melon because I just thought it was really, really interesting. It says it tastes like Greek yogurt and I'm not quite sure what that would be like. But I thought, you know what, if I have room for it, I'll grow it. If I don't, then I'll save them for some other time or I'll give them out and see swaps or something. And then I've got a couple squashes. I got a zucchini uh, for, just as a standard to have because I do like zucchini and eat a lot of it. And then I got a rogue biff de camps. I'm not quite sure if I'm saying that right. I'm probably not. Um, but it's a pumpkin. And they're really pretty interesting pumpkins. I thought that they were really kind of fun. Uh, so that way I could have something for later this fall to decorate with and uh, probably eat. <laughs> I eat a lot of a lot of squash and that kind of thing. And I can plant them over there by the where the watermelons are going. I have some more beans because I eat a lot of beans. I eat a lot of beans and rice. I eat a lot of beans with like chicken and um, pork chops and things like that. And kind of mix them in with stir fry. So I got some red swan beans. I got some Dixie speckled butter, be butter peas. These looked really kind of interesting. I've never had these before, but I found a whole lot of recipes for them online when I was looking at what are these. So I thought I would give them a try. Um, I got some runner beans, scarlet runner beans, because they're really pretty, and some black coated, black coat runner beans, because I thought they were pretty and you know, if you're gonna eat something, bonus if it's pretty in the corner, right? So there's those, and I got a bunch more flowers, because I just can't help myself. <laughs> I got uh, some more Cosmos, because this color was just so pretty. Apricot Lemonade, look at that. Isn't that lovely? I thought that would be so pretty. And the nice thing about Cosmos is that you don't have to start them inside. You just go out and scatter them and they just and just direct sew them. And they come up kind of like zinnias and um, bachelor buttons and things like that. Uh, calendula is another one, or calendula. I'm not sure how the best way to say that is, but you just go out there and scatter them and, and they grow. So I was looking for something like that. I've got a section set aside in my brain <laughs> for a bunch of cosmos and zinnias. So it'll just be a big burst of custard color. I got some nasturtiums in those towers that I talked about. I thought I would grow some more nasturtiums because I think they're really pretty. I like that they're edible and also they are really, really great to attract aphids and keep them away from your other plants. So I'm, I have a ton of nasturtiums that I'm planting since I've got space for them. I've got some asters. Um, I have some phlox. And I got marigolds because I always, always plant marigolds with my tomatoes and my peppers and anything else. So then that way it kind of wards off certain pests. I got some love and a mist. And I have some love and a mist from Florette also, but I decided that I would grow some more <laughs> and kind of blend them together, see which ones I like better, kind of test them out. I got some more nasturtiums. These are orchid cream. I thought that they were really pretty kind of with their purple and or their burgundy and cream kind of the veining in between them. the petals I thought was nice. I got some black boy bachelor's buttons kind of a deep deep purple color. I have a bright blue bachelor button but I didn't have this color and this color is so unique every time I see this I always buy it because I just I love how dark and striking it is it just kind of stands out to me. I got some Twinkles Dwarf Flocks, which is a, this is a shorter one. It only gets nine inches rather than the two to three feet most flocks does. So I thought that'd be nice. I got some Dwarf Asters, so some other shorties. I got some Echinacea, and I got some Dianthus. 
I got some calendula, calendula. I never know if I'm saying that right. Is there like a specific way to say that? I don't know. But I got some of those. Uh, more nasturtiums. And I got some cone flowers and some more cosmos. I'm realizing I got a lot of yellow. Apparently I was in a mood for something sunny. It must have been a really gray day when I was looking over my order before I finished it. I got some heliotrope for some purple. I don't buy a lot of purple. It's not my favorite color, but I feel like I need to have something purple. I got some poppies. I got two varieties. I got poppy supreme and poppy black swan and another calendula snow princess which is kind of a white and yellow there you go flowers and then the weird randoms and free seeds because baker creek always sends those to you i got some asparagus because i want to start an asparagus patch and i got some cylindrical beets and then i got some colorado red star artichokes these i'm starting almost immediately i'm very very excited about these because they're supposed to be able to come to fruit or come to flower, excuse me, in the first season. So I'm not 100% sure how that's gonna go, but I'm looking forward to trying it and seeing how it works. I've got some other artichokes that I'm gonna try side by side and see what I think of it. I'm growing all my artichokes in containers this year, just as a heads up. And then I've got some kohlrabi that I got for free. I've never grown or had kohlrabi before. But I think that they're pretty. They're really large. I know they're large, but this one says the bulbs get three inches across themselves. And I know that the, I know the actual like whole plant gets like pretty large, like two or three feet across and, and wide also. But I don't know, maybe I can plant it with my Swiss chard and it'll just be kind of these pretty pops of club colors that come up and then put some little shorty flowers in front of them. And then they gave me some purple echinacea, which I'll just slip in with my other one. So that is what I have right now. And that's a lot, you guys. <laughs> that's a lot. It's actually kind of long. So <sighs> I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and end the video now because I don't want to... I don't want it to run into too much. I want it to kind of make sense as it goes along and we can talk about seed organizing tomorrow. So stay tuned to the video that comes out next because I do want to go through how I organize my seeds and I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye. And end. Mm.